This is Martin. Uh, and as you say, I'll just go ahead and uh, start by showing the site plumbing software directly to our viewers. Thank you all for being here. Uh, site plumbing is a tool not only for modeling and designing the complete uh, plumbing installation, both for water supply and water drainage, but also it is a tool for generating, um, automatically sizing the installation, performing the calculations that are necessary, uh, and automatically generating the documents that need to take place in order to define an installation, the 2D plans, the reports, the, the isometric view, and, and so on, the, the BOQ. So we are not only uh, modeling, but we are also uh, generating documents automatically and performing the calculations so that our project is complete and checked. Uh, I'll turn off my camera to better uh, share the information. And I'll just go ahead and show the program. So, um, excuse me. Site plumbing here is the tool that we'll show. And this is the first look of the program when we, when we start, um, when we open it. I always like to start by that part. When we generate a new uh, file, just by clicking the new command over there, we may choose to link uh, the file to a BIM Server Center project. So we would be introducing ourselves in a BIM uh, workflow, and this is an option, or we may choose to not to do so. So in this case, I'm not linking the file. And what we see first is the possibility of, of choosing the default settings for different countries so that we uh, may um, automatically select the different uh, settings according to the codes and the rules and the materials used in different countries. So if we do, if we select, we uh, just select a, a bunch of settings that are automatically configured. Or we may just not choose anything and just go ahead with the default um, in the program and then manually introduce all the possible um, analysis and drawing options, material and equipment selection and design and check options in the general options menu. So we may, instead of selecting the options that come with the program, we may manually introduce all those settings, or we may select one of the ones that come with the program and then modify it and save it for the next product. So I'll go with an example that I have prepared. This is a simple, a small offices building. And what you're seeing is the look of the project if we linked the file with a BIM a workflow, right? This uh, geometry of the building hasn't been modeled from within site plumbing. It has been modeled in a BIM modeler. So if we have a BIM model with the geometry of the building, we may use it uh, as a guide to start our, our installation. And if we, if we don't do that, it's no problem at all. We may just go ahead and work with a traditional workflow and we would be able to use plans, maybe uh, image files, maybe DWG or DXFs. And this would be the look of of the, of the different floor views. Or we might even start from scratch and, and, and just modeling from scratch. In this case, I'm, I'm modeling, uh, aiding uh, my model with the plan uh, in 2D coming from the XF files, right? So this is a small project. This would be the 3D view of the complete installation. And I may pick 2D views, right? First thing I'd like to share is that we may define the water systems, the water supply, the sanitary systems in the tab sanitary systems, which would be the drainage network. And the look is pretty much the same. The tools are really similar, but they are meant for uh, defining different installations, right? But we have the possibility of watching the water supply network when working in the, in the drainage network. And the other way around, we may choose to activate the visibility of the drainage um, installation when working in the supply installation, right? So I'll just quickly model uh, a really small and simple example, right? I'll just introduce a supply connection point over here. Maybe a meter. All these elements uh, come previously defined in the general options menu, or I may define them and modify them by myself. And let's maybe add a consumption point, let's say a toilet. So we are only using uh, cold water in this quick modeling, right? And now let's go ahead with the pipes. I may choose the different options of, of pipes that come in the, in the configuration that I picked. 
or I may define new ones. In this case, I'm choosing the PPR pipe that I've defined previously for cold water. And I'm modeling in a 2D view, forcing the elevation to be the one that I need. Now I model each element in the elevation value that I wish. I may go ahead and generate the vertical pipes easily with this command over here. And they've been automatically generated, three vertical pipes. Now I, my, my installation is complete. And as you see, the program not only models, but also performs calculation and checks and warns me when things are maybe not that right. So if I use the automation design tools, uh, I just, automatically size the elements in my model and perform the, the checks that need to be performed. And that's it. Now that I've generated a model, we'll see that we not only have the geometry, but now we have the possibility of generate with a few clicks, all the 2D plans of the, of the floors of our project, all the um, reports with the listing of the different elements, materials, checks, and so on. And we may do so with this, as I said, uh, a few clicks. Let's, let's pick the drawings command over here. I may choose the output, maybe PDF, maybe DWG. I'm leaving the default settings for this tool. I'm not altering anything. And as you see, I've just generated automatically all the plan views with the elements, with the um, plumbing fixtures that are present in the in each floor, and not only the plan views, but also the isometric view, the the 3D, right? And I may modify and alter this default configuration as much as I need. In this case, I we've, we've previously set A3 paper size, uh, many floors per sheet. In this case, in in other case, we may just add one floor per per paper sheet, for example, or for per layer and so on. We may edit as much as we need. So we've generated the 2D plans automatically. We may go ahead and do the same with the reports. We pick the material reports over there and automatically the program has listed, generated the report of all the different elements with the properties of the material selected. The original model over there has been uh, made with copper pipes and this quick model that I just done a minute ago has been done with the PPR pipes. And of course we have the list over there. We may also generate, for example, the checks. And we have these 13 pages, it's a small project, generated automatically with the description, um, the minimum di diameter, the hydraulic analysis, flow velocity, and so on for each of the of the pipes and each of the elements that take place in the in the program, right? So we've generated the 2D plans and the, and the isometric view automatically. Once we've modeled, we've generated the reports automatically. We have tools, for example, to generate the diagrams. In this case, let's check, for example, the, the diagrams of the sanitary system. Um, I've used these automate, automation tools over here, the update results and new, to generate automatically this part of the diagram. And then, I use these tools over here for manually defining the diagram on this area of, of this specific example. So we may automate or we may go manual and go as precise as we need. This is the same for the water systems and the sanitary system staffs. And maybe to, to finish, as a last area I like to describe of this, of this powerful software, it is the bill of quantities area. In this case, let's just erase everything. So you'll see what the program uh, does. Uh, well, let's show an example with the water systems, for example, which is already empty, right? If we use this tool up here in the upper uh, right area of the screen, update the quantities and just I'll leave the checkbox unselected. The program automatically measures 
all the elements that are present in the model. So I don't have to manually be measuring the amount of feet of pipes or meter of pipes or the amount of units of elements, the amount of meters, the amount of toilets. The program does it for me. So we've automatically counted all the elements that are present in the program. I might now go and manually price each of the elements. Let's pick, for example, this dishwasher over here. And I may decide if I have the information from the manufacturer, for example, to put the price in there manually, let's say 1,000. In this case, it's euros, but it could be made with whatever, with whichever currency, let's say Philippines uh, pesos, for example, I might pick those. So I might manually go and define the price of that element over there. But I might also, if I've already made previous projects and I have the price per unit of different elements, I might import the BC3 file, which is the file for price per units and for BOQs over here, import BC3. Or in this case, I'll do it over here, the, the same tool. And I'll just select a BOQ file that I have uh, from previous projects. Just go ahead and select it and automate the pricing of all the projects. So I may go manual or I may go automate, automatic. So now we've not only uh, counted the amount of each of the elements that are present in the project, but also priced each of them. And that would be it for today. Um, I think this is a really interesting tool. So um, hope you find this useful. Do not hesitate to contact. Me.